Marhaba, and welcome to the Matrix Green Pill, where real people connect. Hello and welcome back to the Matrix Green Pill podcast. I'm Hilmarie Hutchison and today I'm so excited to introduce Zara Kumri, a little person with an incredible story. Zara was born with achondroplasia, the most common form of dwarfism, but her short stature is not holding her back. She's a mother of a teenager, a computer engineer, and the founder of a support group and co-founder of an events company. My goodness, so many things she's done. Zara, welcome and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for that lovely introduction. It's my pleasure and thank you for having me over for the podcast. I'm so excited to talk to you today. Zara, some of our listeners will definitely already know your story, but for those who don't, could you please introduce yourself and tell us how you ended up here in the UAE? I am Zara Kumri, as already introduced. I stand 127 centimeters tall. The reason I started with this is because somehow you get your personality gets associated with the way you look. Hence, I started with this and I am really proud to be that tall. I am a computer engineer by qualification. I was born in Mumbai, India to a wonderful family. I have two siblings, extremely supportive. After finishing engineering, I went into the animation field. I was working for two years as a line producer. That's when I received an email one day from my husband stating, introducing himself. And he said, you know, I'm 133 cent centimeters tall and I replied and I said you know you're lucky you are a few six centimeters taller than me and that I think that clicked both our honesties and I'm happily married now with uh, a teenage daughter after marriage my since my husband was working in the banking sector in UAE I moved in 2006 to Abu Dhabi we were a few years there and then I moved to Dubai I love the UAE it's been a wonderful home Now let's jump right into talking about dwarfism and chondroplasia. For people who don't know, can you please explain the difference between these two terms? Dwarfism is any person with a short height. Normally it is four feet 10 inches and under, that's when you call a person a little person. Dwarfism is the broader term. Within that, you have 200 different types of dwarfism, a chondroplasia being the most common. That's what myself and my daughter Zoya have the condition. There are many reasons that a person can be shorter than the average. The most common reason is skeletal dysplasia, which in medical terms, we say a chondroplasia. As is a disproportionate dwarfism. So if you have a look at me, I am shortened at the limbs, but I have a normal torso. So if I have to measure my torso and a six foot or a seven foot tall person's torso, it will be exactly the same. That's interesting. Is it genetic always? It's not genetic always. My mom is six feet tall. My dad is some 5'10". A child with dwarfism is born like one in 10,000 births. If the parents have dwarfism, there's a 50% chance, especially the mother, that it will go to the child. So we did do genetic testing and the doctor was like, are you sure? And my husband and I just replied to him that we have lived our lives wonderfully. So even if our child has to be born with the gene, Yes, we will accept it. That was a great uh, path. We Dwarfism does not come with too many mental issues. We have a lot of complications going on in our body physically. There are a lot of, I wouldn't say side effects, but there are a lot of challenges. This It could be with the head, like I had hydrocephalus. It could be your narrow air passage. It could be the spine, which is a major issue with dwarfism, your neck. So yes, we come in a small package, but we have a lot going on in us. Right. Besides what's happening in the body and of course those challenges that you're facing, what are some of the other challenges that people that are short would face that regular people or tall, what's the correct term to use, might not face? I don't know why, but 
height is given just too much importance especially in my home country back in India I don't know why I mean you ask any child and you know or any teenager and the first thing you ask them what kind of life partner I don't know the first thing that will come out is tall I don't know why people don't get this concept that height is God gifted you can change your skin color you can change your body shape you cannot change height is not going to make you four feet to six feet. So, I mean, there are loads of challenges. The normal world is not made for a person below four feet. So everything they have is five feet. So even like now, touch wood, thanks to the awareness spreading around, things are changing a bit. But whether it is counters, whether it's washrooms, whether it's supermarkets, we always face an issue. I would imagine that must make life difficult sometimes. When I travel, I have my feet hanging in the air. Trust me, ask a normal person to sit with the feet hanging in the air even for 15 minutes and they will say, okay, my back hurts. I mean, wherever I travel, I always go with a stool to rest my feet. I've had spine surgeries, hence I also go with a pillow. I use a wheelchair places where I have to. At the same time, I am walking. There are a lot of eyes that turn to us with the uh, look that you are using a wheelchair, but you are also walking. They don't understand the bridge in between. Even for the special needs community, we are talking, we are walking. We really get sandwiched between the so-called normal world and the special needs community. But thanks to the awareness, thanks to the medical advancement, dwarfism is officially a disability. So that you are able to receive the support that you need in order to make your daily life just that more comfortable. That's true. Have you faced much bias personally or have you experienced it? Or And I know you have a daughter as well. Have you experienced bias because of your height? Oh, yes, we have. I was bullied quite a bit back home in India. My daughter in UAE also gets bullied a lot. My husband is in the complete professional business. So yes, he had a lot of drawbacks, I would say, because of his height. Although people don't realize it, that we are mentally very strong. We are in every walks of life. You know, if in an organization, when you see a little person rising, you will feel, oh my God, you know, why he or she and why not me? In terms of, you know, kids are very tender. They don't realize when they see somebody different. As I was growing up, I had a lot of bullying, not only from kids, but as well as adults. And when I saw my daughter go through the same thing, you know, kids would laugh at her. But at times, even the parents would laugh looking at her. Or the child would, you know, point out to my daughter and say, just look at her. And the parent would just pull the child along. So this is definitely what we do not want. We want to be called by our names. We want the parents to realize that please stop your child that moment and explain why are we different. Don't give height so much importance so that next time they see anybody different, they do not give that smirky smile. As a family, when we move out, I have we travel across the globe, you believe it or not, more than clicking pictures of the monument or a wonderful place, people have clicked our photographs saying, oh my God, look at this family. We get these looks every time we are walking on the road, we are walking in the mall and you just have a look and you'll feel, you'll see all the eyes turning towards us. My husband and I have overgrown this age, but my daughter is yet in that this. So she does get a little conscious, although we are making her, uh, I mean, she is growing into a stronger human being. So she is trying to overcome these looks. I'm sorry that both you and her have gone through that. It's awful yeah. that people treat people who are different like that. Because really? as you say, at the end of the day, height is not what determines who you are. I'm sorry that you've had to go through that. And there are also families who sometimes don't bring their kids out just because they are different. So definitely we would want to tell them that please expose your child. Most important is educate. If you have that education with you, you will not be used. We little people get used as ushers in restaurants, as entertainment, you know, symbols, whereas we have a lot more to us. You've mentioned some of the challenges and also some of the misconceptions. What misconceptions 
do people have about people with dwarfism? The main misconceptions they have is that we do not have the intellectual ability, that we are not smart. They associate uh, little people or dwarfs as being dumb. And this has to come to an end. This is a very major aspect that they should not associate us with. They should realize that we can do any type of normal work. Yes, we do it a bit differently. We may require our requirements may be a little more to a normal person. Our adjustments may be a little more. So please do not associate the little people community with just entertainment purposes. Give us an equal footing just as normal individuals. Also, the misconception is like when I go with my daughter, now she's 13. If you talk to a normal teenager, you will speak like a normal young adult. But a lot of individuals yet do a baby talk with her. And then I have to tell them that she's 13. You can directly ask her the question and she will answer you. In fact, once I was at a restaurant with uh, Gulshan and a few more adults. A server came to us and he's asking Gulshan, what's my order? And Gulshan had to tell him, look at her. She's a mother. You can directly speak to her. Also, people associate our looks as being cute. I think everybody's cute in this world. Any family is cute if they are together. So we get a lot of this comment. Hey, look at them. They are so cute. We all are cute. Let's accept everybody. So yeah, these are the major misconceptions. Very interesting. Yeah. As you say, you want to be recognized for being a person rather than being made out to be different because you're short. Because besides the shortness, there's nothing else that's different. Don't label us. You know, the worst is when we label people. We are given names for a reason. It must be challenging for parents of children with dwarfism, especially maybe like in the case of of your parents where neither of them had that and then they have a child with that. What advice would you give to parents of children with dwarfism or to anybody for that matter who meets somebody of a short stature? Definitely for new parents, it is a challenge because suddenly you see something different going on. And yes, we do have a lot of complications in our early stage of life. But Uh, with the advancement there are lots of support groups medical advisory the internet is full of articles but definitely a message to the parents would be that don't pity yourself don't let your child feel pitied at any moment that they are different make them very strong individuals make them realize that those stairs should not affect their life make them realize that you have to be strong in terms of your education and also parents you know they they compare Definitely, you have to stop comparison. You have to stop hiding your child in a very sheltered environment. Let your child face the challenges, but let them move on. And if somebody passes a comment, like if now I have reached a stage when I see a child mocking at my daughter, I immediately go and stop and speak to the child or the parent with that child. For that matter, even an adult. If an adult has to look at me with those questions, questionable eyes, I definitely go up and make them aware of my condition. That would be my strong message to parents that don't give up and don't hide your child. That's an excellent message. I think, as you said earlier, it's all about education. So take the opportunity when people are confused or or when they're behaving inappropriately, call it out. Tell them, listen, you're talking, you're looking at a person here with absolute capability that you have to look at me like I'm a clown or I'm cute or something to be laughed at. Is not acceptable behavior. Call them out for that and teach your child that, to, to be proud, to stand tall at whatever height they are, right? To not hide away, to not cower, and to call out bad and unacceptable behavior. That's the only way that you'll get people to change, is to not accept if they act in that, in that way. Now, you mentioned uh, support groups and that you can, of course, turn to the internet to find out information. Let's talk about the group that you founded called Little People. Tell us a bit about why you formed the group and so let's start with that, How, why you formed the group. The main reason being my daughter, when she got started bullying in school, I said, uh, you know, we have to begin awareness. We have to start awareness. That's when we started looking out for similar individuals, for little people within the country. And we formed a very small support group just so that we can 
talk to each other share our life stories share our uh, physical i mean our uh, medical conditions and how we have overcome it now since myself my husband has induced shortness doesn't fall in the category of dwarfism but he is of short stature and since we have lived our life and we uh, we were very confident with my daughter new parents aunt this group was formed to speak to those parents and tell them about our life journey it's motivating and easy going for them the main reason to form this is was awareness we gave talks in several schools across we gave it in a few events now post the pandemic a few of the members have moved out of the country few have started their academic careers a few of them are uh, busy in their work and let me tell you we are in all the fields you ask whether it is science whether it is uh, in journalism whether it is i mean as a doctor as an engineer as an accountant as a ca as a banker we are everywhere it was nice to form this group because you come across uh, people from all different walks of life excellent now i know that you mentioned that it has benefited and and the, it helps to raise the awareness but have you seen an impact or has the group helped your daughter soya as well it did help my daughter zoya because then she realized she is not the only one there are several people like her within the space she is in we did visit a larger organization like the little people of america like when we went for those conferences we felt okay this world is ours because there were only little people surrounded in fact the normal people looked a bit odd amongst us that's the main reason i mean it has helped zoya because she realized that she's not the only one or her mother and father are not the only one we are i mean come on if we are one in 10000 we are a number exactly and also a brilliant forum to get together with people who understand the challenges so you don't have to explain the challenges you don't have to talk about the difficulties because everyone's on the same page they understand you and then because different people come with different experiences they can maybe you know share how they overcame a problem or how they're dealing with challenges very true and small small it can be very small points uae is so wonderful with the awareness this thing and thanks to the government for giving the people of determination so many facilities it's just like small things you know whether you talk about your uh, salic exemption or whether you speak about oh i'm using you know this tool it's really nice i'm using this step stool in order to reach the wash basins or i am using this gadget in order to open the tap faucet it's even small matters like this two bigger ones of how i mean for your uh, universities school selections for your job i mean so we we cover a very wide spectrum that would make sense because if one person will know this particular mall or this particular store has facilities that accommodate people that are short because when the group come together they can all give each other tips where is the best place to shop where like you say which schools to select which ones have made the facilities the tailor we should go to because it's so difficult to get our clothes i don't know why there is not a petite section and why is petite associated only by with being thin it's very difficult to touch with my i mean my daughter yet manages to order some stuff online but i have to get majority of my bottom wear stitched even the normal i have to get altered which i think the entire little people community is facing this aspect so we would really wish you know that the uh, clothing brand start keeping clothes of our size to have special sizes yes exactly there's already for other categories there's special sizes so why not for little people as well now the group little people is not your only venture let's talk a little bit about the event company that you're a co-founder of ray of hope can you tell us a little bit about that what that it's about and why you started that I used to volunteer with special needs adult artists at an art studio that's where I met uh, Gulshan Kavrana she is a wonderful lady she's completely transformed my life at this age being in my 40s I always being a person of determination I always wanted to do something for people of determination to give back to the community I love working within our space Gulshan said you know why don't we start something together and I said yes 
let's let's just go ahead for it when we were back in the place where i used to volunteer they used to do corporate social responsibility events with different sectors in industries when the pandemic hit and the studio closed there were a lot of artists who were at home and super talented and that's when gulshan said you know why should we let their talent just get ignored at home why don't we do something and that's when she came up with the idea of starting ray of hope ray of hope events it is an event company where we do corporate social responsibility events with the companies it is a not for profit organization where we are building a very safe and a nurturing platform for people of determination not only to spread their shine to showcase their talents but to live brighter our vision was like to build a very inclusive community of people with all abilities this uh, venture uh, thanks to gulshan we are hoping to reach it across uh, several sectors now that's fun what a brilliant initiative I absolutely love it. To make that and I love what you said, it's all inclusive. So you've not created it just for a certain demographic. You've included everybody, but with a focus of supporting. You know, you notice that in organizations, it's a very close knit. They do I mean this whole ever changing world and this ever competitive world. It's uh, organizations don't realize what is happening outside and how skilled people of determination are how talented we are so we are bridging this gap we are getting them into our special needs world so during the event we have motivational talks we have uh, sign language being taught we have art being taught and obviously at the end of it we do an art piece together so it's fun because they break the ice and at the end of it there's nothing but empowerment Fantastic. What an excellent initiative. Well done with that. Congratulations. Let's talk a little bit more on the business side. Did you have many challenges when you started this company? Because you said it was a not for profit. What sort of challenges did you face in setting this up? When you set up an enterprise, you have to be willing to take the associative risks that come I would say with any business venture. It's a journey where you welcome failures, you welcome success, you learn from each thing and you never give up. For me, I love surprises i love challenges i am a little workaholic i mean work is worship for me every journey has its own surprises and learnings to offer so i can confidently say that thanks to gulshan i love this journey and i wouldn't say that there is any major challenges we are learning as we are moving ahead so should there be anything yes let's face it and move on for listeners you might be thinking of starting their own business what is one thing you wish you knew when you started the company or the events company what is one tip i just believe in one thing i have worked earlier in different organizations if your goal and your motive is very clean i mean you know you are working with people of determination we are not looking at a business side we are looking at empowering them empowering the society so the minute you start looking at a business in terms of your profit i don't think that works for people of determination gulshan and myself we have a very clean heart and i can positively speak for both of us that uh, i mean don't start something for people of determination and say we are doing it for them i mean to show one aspect that uh, oh we are doing it but the other side you aren't what you're saying is not about money it's not about profits your passion is about helping people genuinely and that is what makes it successful that is what what brings you joy if you're going to start a company whether it's for people of determination or anything else it's got to come from a place of passion you've got to know your why you've got to know what it is that drives you to be successful you've already accomplished a lot clearly in your life you've not let your height stop you in any way which is absolutely brilliant do you have any future goals or projects that you're working on Few- future goals would definitely be to spread more awareness for little people for ray of hope to reach across loads of corporate uh, entities to bridge the gap between the so called normal world and our people of determination world projects that uh, i would be working on are currently just approaching companies telling them do an event with us and realize how wonderful our special needs artists are 
Lovely. Excellent. Thank you for that. And thank you so much. This has been excellent. I've learned some things from you. I'm so inspired by what you've accomplished, you and Gulshan, and, and also the, the artists that you're working with. We've been very, very fortunate to have had them as guests on the podcast. So we are very grateful to have got to know all of your team, which has been fantastic. So thank you for that. Now we've come to the segment of our show where I will ask you a few rapid fire questions. So this is our version of a game show. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so whatever comes into your head first, chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Sunset or sunrise? Sunset. Who has been your role model? At uh, this point, Gulshan, but always it has been my mom. Oh, lovely. And tell us one of your proudest moments during your journey till now. Is uh, first back home in India when I stood first in the handicap category, both uh, at the 10th grade and 12th grade. That's when the world stopped pitting my family and started accepting us with pride. Next, I would say the most proud moment is when I became a mother. And definitely now the proudest moment is when we started Ray of Hope and I am giving back to the community. So thank you for playing along. That's the end of our game show. Now, before we wrap up, we'd like to do our green pool moment. What was your green pool moment, the action or event that was the turning point for you or your career? Uh, there have been several green pill moments, but I would say the major one, which has been the turning point of my career, being at the age of 42, reaching 43, is to start a ray of hope with my mentor, Gulshan Kavarana action or this event has completely changed me. I have started looking life very positively. I want to live more. I want to do more. I want to be there with Gulshan at every step. We want to reach out to community. We want this entire world to be one having no prejudice. A world I wish, I mean, I hope and we pray we will reach there. Everyone is accepted. Fantastic. So beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Zara, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you today. I've really enjoyed hearing about your challenges, about your successes, about the things you're looking forward to in the future. It's been absolutely inspiring. So thank you for that. Before we say goodbye, could you please tell our listeners where they can find and follow you? We'll also put this in the show notes. You can follow Ray of Hope events on Instagram. Our handle name is Ray of Hope DXB, small case. You can follow me on Instagram as well, Zara underscore Khumri. And uh, you can reach us also at our website, uh, rayofhopedxb.com. Excellent. Thank you again for that. And it was so nice talking to you. I wish you all the very best and Ray of Hope all the very best as well. Thank you so much. My pleasure to be having speaking to you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. If you enjoy our conversations, please like and subscribe. See you next Wednesday.